My name is Issa Harel. It was my responsibility as head of Israeli intelligence to determine whether this information would lead us to Eichmann. Into his hands had been placed the implementation of the infamous final solution, or into still another blind alley. Don't you find it curious that Dr. Bauer came to us with this information? No, no, I don't find it curious. Dr. Bauer is an honest man who has very little faith in his own government's willingness to pursue war criminals. I don't like it. It worries me. With all their resources, suddenly the German government comes to us to find Eichmann. Why? I have already told you why. Now, there comes a time when you must trust someone. All right. Perhaps Dr. Bauer is an honest man. What about the others? This could be a trap to embarrass the state of Israel. Walter, I deal in traps. I set traps. I can smell a trap. Now, this is honest information from a man with a conscience. Now, you will just have to trust my judgment. My first step was to meet with Prime Minister Ben-Gurion to obtain approval for the operation. Yes, sir, what are the odds that this man is really Eichmann? Well, <clears throat> Ben-Gurion, we can only be certain when we have this man in our hands. I will sanction this action because there is a moral significance to it that can't be applied to anything we've ever undertaken before. I believe that it's not only our right, but our duty to bring Eichmann to trial in Israel. By doing this, we demonstrate that this man's crimes were not just directed against the Jews. They were directed against all humanity. Go ahead, Issa. Keep me informed. And Issa, don't get caught. <laughs> It was determined that our best method of operation would be to continue our meetings in public places. In a city as large as Buenos Aires, it would be easier to get lost in a crowd than to attempt to meet secretly. Isa, what are we facing if we get caught? Well, in most countries, the crime of kidnapping is punishable by death. What about his family's reaction to his disappearance? Well, in my opinion, I don't think the wife will do anything. Any police official will regard his disappearance as a liaison with a woman or that he's on an alcoholic binge. No, I don't think she can afford to expose her husband's existence. Much less his disappearance. Michael? You will handcuff yourself to this man. And if you are arrested, you will surrender this man to the competent Argentine officials. The rest of you will have to escape the best way you can. I will then come forward immediately and assume responsibility for this operation. What about the fraternal order of Nazis here in Argentina? I don't believe that they will abandon him, but this is only a supposition. You have to be alert to radio and newspaper reports. Now, our biggest danger is the eldest son, Nicholas. He is willful and erratic, but his options are very limited. Now, if you make a positive identification, let me know. If it is him, you can start a tape interrogation. Even if we can't get Eichmann out, we can broadcast the contents to the world. And again, I stress that Ackman must not be harmed. Now, nobody can speak for six million dead. But you have been chosen by destiny to act in their behalf, for their memory. We are, in the end, in God's hands. Now, may he protect us and help us. Two of our best agents, Michael and Ari, were assigned the task of discovering the whereabouts of this man, Ricardo Clement. They traced the man with that name to a house on Chacabuco Street, where he had lived until three weeks before. 
Posing as German businessmen, they arrange an appointment with a man named Kessler, a local real estate agent. Welcome, gentlemen. Guten Tag, Herr Kessler. Prepared, Herr Dietz. Have a seat, please. Thank you. So, you gentlemen are interested in buying the property at 4261 Chakabuka Street? It depends, of course, on the terms. The land and the house are available for 35,000 American dollars. Oh. 35,000 uh, American dollars is a very respectable sum. Yes, of course. But it accommodates two families. Mm. But one has moved on now. While the apartment is vacant, I'm having it renovated. You say one family has moved? I assure you, the move has nothing to do with uh, any difficulties at the apartment. Good. They had four sons. My place did not suit them anymore. They were fine tenants, very neat. In fact, all my tenants are good Germans, like ourselves. Uh, what are the taxes and what is the cost of uh, electricity in this area of Chakabuka Street? I can assure you the taxes are moderate. As for electricity, in Argentina, the tenants are built directly by the electric company. They furnish credit reference and the meters are installed in the tenant's name. Good. Herr Dietz, this is very important, a very important saving. Thank you. Thank you. I have other holdings. If you don't find anything suitable, please come back. It is always a pleasure to do business with people from the old country. Herr Kessler, auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Vacated. Yeah. November 1959. Yeah. We lost credit reference. Credit reference. Wait. Ah. Here. Wait, wait. Fulner Capri Company. Employer. We're not dead yet. Gracias, senor. Gracias mucho, senor. No. Isn't it your son's birthday this month? Two days ago. He's seven. I think I made four of them. Part of our work, I'm afraid. I accept it, all of it. Absence from home, loneliness, risks. But this assignment, I have no stomach for this assignment. Why? I don't understand the need to find this monster. We can't change history. We can't bring back the six million. Dangerous present. Terrorists are attacking our settlements. German scientists in Egypt are building rockets. We are sitting here 10,000 miles away, looking for a man whose crimes were committed 17, 18 years ago. And we don't even know if he exists. He exists. And when we get him, you will understand why it was so important. You've never seen genocide. Most people in the world haven't seen it. They haven't smelt it. The ovens, the burning flesh, day after day, month after month, 
year in, year out, with no one interfering. I was there three years in Auschwitz. I saw Eichmann. I saw him. One raw, gray winter day. I saw him standing on a, on a burial mound, resplendent in his uniform, smiling, holding a clipboard in his hands, checking the numbers of the dead. Ari, I want this monster. Michael and Ari contacted an attorney named Lubinsky, a man who had worked for us before and whom we knew could be completely trusted. Mr. Oh, nice meeting you. Oh, Mr. Vogel? Mr. Davis. <laughs> Shalom. Shalom. Here, hey, please sit down, huh? Well, sit down. You were told to sit down. Oh. Now tell me, did you confirm the Clement House? Yes, but we have some bad news. The family lived there, but they moved two months ago. However, we have a credit reference. Arthur, could you check with a full neck Capri company to determine if they employ a Ricardo Clement? Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we're going to have to be very careful uh, sure, how we do it. Sure, but you'll find a reason, I'm sure. Now, look, I've done what you suggested. I have you a local man. Now he's waiting for you in the Café Segovia at Avenida Joseph Ramos. Write it down. I don't need to write it down. Café Segovia, Avenida Jose Ramos. Write it down. Now his name is Primo. He's a professor of uh, agronomy at the university. He's bright, he's reliable, totally, totally dedicated. And he's above suspicion. Good. Uh, how long will it take us to get there? From here, about 15 minutes. Good. Would you please call him and tell him that we are in a DKW, a black one? Black DKW. Yeah, and we'll pull up in front of the cafe. Okay, I'll tell him. Shalom. 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 Takabuko Street. Yeah. Well, no, Primo. Write down. Huh. In Hebrew? Jorge. Come on, in Spanish. Dear George. Dear George. Jorge. Jorge. We are feeling well. We are feeling well. Please come and visit us. Please come visit us. Now, in the sender's place, put down Ricardo Clement. Ricardo Clement. Chakabuka Street, Chakabuka 4261. Street, 4261. Pero no vive allí. Did you say? He said he doesn't live there anymore. Yeah, I know. But you see, you don't know it. Pero tú no lo sabes. Oh, see, I see. I, I want you to go to the house on the pretext of trying to find out who this Clement was who sent you the card. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah? I know yeah. And try and find the new address. Don't press. No, insist us. No, 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 I understand. Good, Primo. Uh, OK? Yeah. Take your pencil. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. What is it? Is this Chacabuco Street? 4261? Yes. I have a car for a Mr. Clement. There used to be a Clement family living here, but they moved. Do you know where? No, they moved. That's all I know. Uh, they have a son, Dieter, who works for the sewing machine repair shop around the corner. Primo. Yes? Do you know a high-class jewelry store? Sure. Why? 
Tomorrow is Nicholas Eichmann's birthday. I want to give him a gift via Dieter, his brother. says to my friend Nikki on your birthday, affectionately, an admirer. Is tomorrow really Nicholas Eichmann's birthday? Yes. But you're not to deliver it. Dieter will, we hope lead us to Nicholas, and Nicholas to his father. It's our best chance. You engage some bellboy and instruct him to deliver it to Nicholas. Michael, there's nothing in this package that's going to explode. No, just a very expensive cigarette lighter. Why do you ask? Uh, there's something terribly depressing about a gaily wrapped explosive. Come on, let's walk. Senora? This young man's name is Pedro. I'm certain he can take care of this errand for you. He seems a little young. I'm 17, senorita, and I know the city very well. All right. Do exactly as the lady says, Pedro. Yes, sir. Thank you. This is a very important errand, Pedro. Muy importante. Hmm? Anything at all, senora. I'm sure that uh, even a boy of your age knows that there are certain things between men and women that require discretion. Of course, Signora. But this is very, very special. When you come back, I want you to tell me every single detail. And you must not leave out anything. Hmm? I understand. And remember, please, this is our secret. No one must ever know. My word of honor, senor. Are you, uh, are you free now? Yes. Good. I have here the packet and the address. Yes? The carpenters working on the house at Chacabuco Street said you're the brother of Nicholas Clement. What is it you want? I must deliver this letter and the gift. Who sent this? One of my friends, another bellboy. At the hotel, he gave it to me. He got it from a guest that was too busy, so he said, you deliver it. I'd still like to know who sent it. What's the difference? They give us these things all the time. We just deliver them. I'll see that my brother gets it. I'm supposed to deliver it personally. Can't you give me your brother's address? That's not possible. Now, either trust me to deliver the parcel or leave. I'm working. Since you're his brother, I guess it's all right. Don't worry, I'll see that he gets it. Thank you. Around 12 o'clock, at 2 o'clock, there is a man I've seen at the Café de la Opera the other night. Describe him. Well, he's wearing a Van Dyke beard, a black suit, and he's having a drink. Can you see him? I see him. Well, he has a policeman's eyes. What are you talking about? We don't like to see the same face twice around us. You're getting paranoid. Paranoia is what keeps us alive in this business. Go ahead. Ricardo Clement worked for the Fulmer Capri Company up until October 1958. After that, they could not see him at all. Smile. 
Hmm? Smile. <laughs> Is the man still there? Yes. Hmm. No. Our only safe surveillance is following Dieter, who will lead us to his brother, Nicholas, or his father. I hope we'll split now. You know, you sit here and keep an eye on the guy. You feel the going on. ¿Qué pasa, gente? Vamos a necesitar el auto para trasladar a un herido grave. Póngase en nuestras órdenes. Está bien, está bien. An accident. We've been commandeered. It is a custom here. Our ambulances are not famous for this heavy, you know. Save nothing. So why didn't you wait till he came out of the dentist and follow him? I was nervous. There wasn't anybody about. What else could she do? Look what happened to us. We turned into an ambulance. Pedro. The bellboy. What about him? How about sending him back to Chakabuka Street and have him complain? The present was not delivered, and now he's held responsible for the money. This is dangerous, Michael. Mm. Why? Because it doesn't make any sense. Why not? Because he would want to go to the address, because, because he would get suspicious. Ari, you think like an agent, not like a 17-year-old bellboy. I hope you're right, Michael. It's as risky as hell. We don't have a better choice. We are on borrowed time, and we'll have to begin to take some risks. I can't help you, son. You have to help me. 
The gift wasn't delivered. Now they want me to pay 500 pesos. I only earn 100 pesos a month. I can't pay. You should see the Dieter boy again. He won't talk to me. I've got to find Nicholas Clemens. They moved, I told you. They went to live in a section called San Fernando. That's a big section. Where about? I don't know. What does he want? He wants to know the Clemens' new address. That's no problem. Two days ago, I did some work for the Clemens. I can give you a dress. To admit, we got lucky. Lucky? Shh, Jackie. After 15 years of searching, it was lucky, then we're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Now we should have a sign on the corner. Yes. Garibaldi Street. And then it should be the second house from the corner. You got the house? Yes, yes. Go down the road. We should have a bus stop there. Yeah. There's someone coming out of the house. Come to the house. Can you see it? Yeah. Well? It's a... Uh, well, describe it. It's a... Uh, it's a blonde woman. Uh... 50, 55, uh, five foot six, seven, uh, she looks like a housewife. Well, it must be Vera, I think. We have the house. wondering, I dare say, why I wanted to see you. Yes. <clears throat> well, there are two reasons. But the first is that Walter Eitan tells me you haven't been sleeping well. I tell you, it's the missing piece that's keeping me awake. And in this case, the missing piece? Well, we have no commercial transportation arrangements with Argentina. We have thought of every conceivable idea. We have not found a legitimate method to get that man out of Buenos Aires. And it is this problem that I've not been able to solve. But God did. What do you mean? I have here a message from him. The state of Israel is invited to send its foreign minister and other state dignitaries to celebrate 150 years of Argentinian independence. Why do you look so surprised? Ben-Gurion, I am not that old, nor have I been here that long, not to be in awe of the miracle. Oh, it's not such a big miracle. After all, if he could park the Red Sea 5,000 years ago, he can certainly send a plane to Argentina in 1960. Its range is 3,500 nautical miles, capacity load. It's capable of flying from Tel Aviv to Buenos Aires with only three stops. Can I depend on a May 11th takeoff? Yes, I'll have it taken out of service to be certain. Now, what about the composition of the crew? Is it the best? Because at some point, they're going to have to know the true purpose of this mission. Yes, whenever you deem it necessary. has arrived, and it's 
Damn it, where is he? Who is that? That must be Nicholas Eichmann and his wife. And here comes Dieter Eichmann. Looks like a family gathering. Excuse me, sir. What is it? I represent the North American company. <laughs> My name is Jorge Aragon. What do you want? Uh, do you know if this land is for sale? Why do you ask? <laughs> We're considering building a plant. <laughs> I saw you. Oh, there. Perhaps. Would you be so kind to show this prospectus to the owner? I'm subleasing this house. I cannot help you. Mr. Rodriguez, this is Aaron Lazar. Who is in charge of the special Israeli flight? Ah, yes, of course. We we'll receive your correspondence. What can I do for you, Senor Lazar? Well, as you know, we're bringing officials of the Israeli government on our DC-6 to your celebrations next week. But this is more than a, just a diplomatic mission for us. We've performed extensive market research. 
And we're interested in the possibility of establishing a commercial route from here to Recife, uh, to Dhaka, uh, to Rome, uh, to Tel Aviv. Your company will be most welcome. And I will personally see that you have our full cooperation. Uh, Cordero, por favor, you will introduce Mr. Lazar to our employees at our private gates, and our own hangars and terminals, so that they are familiar with Mr. Lazar and can afford any and all help. You're very kind, sir. If there's anything else you need, please feel free to call me at any time. We look forward to establishing a permanent commercial affiliation with the Israeli allies. You've been most courteous. And I hope we won't give you too many problems. <laughs> On the contrary. Problems are what I'm here for. <laughs> Two hours. Fifteen years. There he is. secluded one, and this is the one that we will hold Eichmann in. And the code name is Palace. The other two will be used as backup. The code name is Stronghold and Gifts. In case we are discovered, we have the options of falling back on either Stronghold or Gift. Yes, sir. What about yesterday's incident? Well, according to today's newspapers, the incident was due to a drunken driver Gabriel Torres. Now, I think we have to believe this and accept it as true. Perhaps it is true. Or perhaps it was a Nazi hunter. Or a victim of the concentration camps operating alone. Or perhaps a victim of the death camps. No, no, listen. The only danger we have is from a fraternal order made up of former SS men. But the death of Eichmann would only bring their clandestine activities out into the open. Why should they want to kill one of their own? We have to believe that it was an accident. It was pure chance. He said... Yes? We have problems. And what is it? The Argentine government is asking the Israeli delegation to delay their arrival by a week. Oh. Oh, well. Now, this means... We have to hold Eichmann longer than we planned, which means that we increase the risk of discovery all the way down the line. Hmm? But the greater risk is losing Eichmann. No. We will hold to the plans of May 11th. We have been on borrowed time since we started. But don't forget, Eichmann has been living on borrowed time for the past 15 years. Uh, we 
all right. It's just a little problem with the carburetor. We'll fix it. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Can I have a puff? It's all we need, a friendly neighborhood. It is getting late. I hope Primo does not panic. We should have used the radio. No, we should not. We'll use a radio in this area. We'll be picked up in no time by the police. Okay, it's fine. Open your mouth. I was a friend of Rabbi Beck. Chief Rabbi Berlin. Just open your mouth. Teeth. Top pro. Two gold bridges. Numerous fillings on the upper right molars. The bottom teeth are false. Bridges. Fillings. False. Scars. Slight scar, one and one half inches long, below the left eyebrow. Yes, yes, sir. Appendix scar. Yeah. Fracture of the right hand, 1937. I can't do anything about that. Why not? We need x-rays. Scar, one inch long, in the area of the tenth rib, left side of the body. Yes, that's there. Scar above left elbow. 
SS. SS tattoo of blood type on the left armpit. Scar tissue. The late professor. My class ran longer than I expected. You must be hungry. Starved. We have him. See the man? We don't know. Do you maintain your name is Ricardo Clement? SS tattoo of blood type. And the left arm picked. Scar tissue. I would like some wine, please. Sure. Oberstrom Banthura. What was your SS number? What was your SS number? SS tattoo of blood type on the left armpit. What was your SS number? 45826. Correct. Senor Ricardo Clement. You better tell me now your real name. <laughs> My name is Adolf Eichmann. You can easily understand I'm agitated at the moment. I would like to ask for a little more wine, if it's possible. Red wine. I have to control my emotions. Send the cable. The man is the man. I have the greatest admiration for the Israelis. I knew you were after me. You knew? What? How? Many things. Does it matter? Have you been in touch with any former SS here in Buenos Aires? Yes. I went to see uh, General Lichke. What for? I thought I was in danger. Does Lichke have contacts with the Argentine secret police? Of course. How else could we remain here? How else could we obtain proper documents?
Then, Alishka, two days ago, you said you'd have some news. My father has been missing now for four days. I've checked the morgue's hospitals. There is no trace of him. They had to have a woman, huh? Oh. <laughs> he was due home the evening of the 11th and never arrived. He told me of his fears of Israeli commando units. Yes, yes, we all have those fears. An Israeli plane is being flown here for the celebration. I believe the Israelis intend to take my father out on that plane. We know about the plane. We are aware of your father's predicament. That plane will never leave Buenos Aires with your father on board. I have several proposals to make, General. We can bomb the Israeli embassy here, or kidnap the Israeli ambassador and effect an exchange. Now listen to me carefully. Your father's situation rests in the hands of our fraternal order. You will cease all activities in this matter. You will make no further effort to locate him. Do you understand? Forgive me, General, but I understand only one thing. My loyalty to my father. Horse knows more about loyalty than you. I've seen horses carry men in blizzards until they froze upright, man and horse, in a block of ice. That is loyalty. You and your generation know nothing of courage or of loyalty. You sing our songs. You wear our swastikas, like so many children playing at the feet of a lost cause. You will never understand. Profane the memory of those who died. I tell you now, obey my orders, or your father will not be the only Eichmann who is missing. Auf Wiedersehen, Herr General. Who was your superior in Section 4B4? At the chain of command was the front of Führer, to him, to Heinrich. Heinrich Müller was in charge of my section. We have testimony that in early 1941, you went to visit the killing camps in Poland at Helmo. I did visit Helmo. Yes. I witnessed the shooting of 6,000 women and children, but I had nothing to do with that. You were just watching. Did you try to prevent it? That was not possible. The commandant of the camp, Franke, was a fanatic. He showed me a mound of earth that ran 200 meters. There was a spring of blood which kept pumping from this mound, and huge sections of the mound were moving. Franke explained it was the gas from the bodies which created this movement. He was fascinated by this phenomenon. Could you fix again for me, please, a little boiled rice? My stomach is not good today. As you wish. You understand, General, our surveillance is not what I'd like it to be. I cannot act officially. 
But you do have colleagues on the force, Inspector? Only a few. It may surprise you, General, but our police force is highly efficient and, in principle, totally harnessed. For me to work outside the department is a dangerous business. But I just gave you your expenses. Yes. More will be required. But you have nothing to report. Oh, we are discreetly checking throughout the city, but so far nothing has turned up. You are certain? In this business, there is no such a word as certain, General. How much more, Inspector? Oh, I will leave that up to you, as always. Uh, we are aware of the Israeli airplane due to arrive tomorrow evening. And I can tell you now that its passenger complement will be carefully checked before it lands in Buenos Aires. Where will it be checked? I will have the plane delayed and searched in Recife, Brazil. <laughs> we, too, have our fraternal order, General. It is obvious the Israeli commando team is planning to take Eichmann out on that plane. All that is needed is money, General. We are counting on you to prevent the escape, Inspector. We can, but try. Buenos dias, General Lischke. Did you state that you would leap into your grave laughing, having killed six million people? This was taken out of context at Nuremberg. I said this in March 1945. We were in my headquarters in Berlin. Everything was in ruins. Because the Soviet artillery, my staff was demoralized. I made a statement to cheer them up. I never personally killed anyone. I only transported people. The commander of Auschwitz, Hess, testified that you introduced the gas chambers and that you personally went to IG Farben and constructed the killing gas known as Cyclone B. Yes. Yes? Uh, yes, but... Only for humane reasons. You see, at first, the Jews were packed into vans. Hmm? And the carbon monoxide exhaust was funneled into the van. And the van drove up and down for 45 minutes until the screaming stopped. You really mean that the gas chambers were an improvement. Without question. According to the chemist Al Faber, death occurred within three minutes. In March 1944, did Himmler issue an order to cease all gassing at Auschwitz? Did he? Yes, Miller mentioned it to me. But you, nevertheless, transported hundreds of thousands of Hungarian Jews to Auschwitz and ordered us to have them guessed. Why? Because Himmler's order was verbal. I could act only on written orders. Tell me, did you ever attempt to save one single human being. A man, a woman, a child. There were no possibilities for exceptions. I did, however, instruct hers to let the children have a chocolate before they entered the gas chamber. I even had an orchestra of inmates playing a Strauss waltz as the women waited in line to be gassed. You see, I tried to remove fear.
your flight? Fine. Good. I've arranged for you to park the plane on the far side of the airfield. Just follow the maintenance jeep. All right? Right. When did you first hear the words, the final solution? In January 1942, at the so-called Wannsee Conference in Berlin, we were all summoned to Heydrich Villa. Who was summoned? Myself and my superior Miller and the Under Secretaries of State. Heydrich stated that he had received a direct order from the Führer to institute at once the collection transportation and extermination of 11 million European Jews. We all fell silent. Then Miller spoke. He said that I was the acknowledged expert in Jewish affairs, that I had a gift for organization, that there was no one in Section 4B4 more qualified to carry out the Führer's order. Don't look around. Look straight ahead. Go on. Why did you stop? Go on. I was trying to recall the precise order of events. After me, there was a moment of silence. Then Heidrich turned to me. His hair was caught in the sunlight. It was like gold. His eyes were very deep blue. He was a legend. He was a giant in the party. He was Hitler's favorite. He was the Pope of the Reich. He spoke one sentence to me. Comrade Eichmann, are you prepared to carry out the sacred task? I suddenly felt restraint gone, all emotion gone. In that moment, I believed it was my destiny to ensure the supremacy of the Aryan race, to immunize the German people from the inferior races. I realized that in Europe, there could be no redemption for the Jew. In my mind, the Jew had become a virus, a bacillus. He had to be exterminated. I rose up out of my chair, I saluted Heydrich, and I stated that he could consider the final solution already implemented. But in the end, I was betrayed. I was promoted only to Lieutenant Colonel. It is your intention to take me out and shoot me. Go on. No, the intention is <coughs> to take you to Israel to be tried. I would like you to agree to it. I am prepared to let the world know that I'm innocent. I was only a small cog in a big chin. I've prepared the draft of a letter for your consideration, in which you agree to be tried in Israel. Where were you working in Buenos Aires? Hmm? Uh, at the Mercedes assembly plant, 327 Kelly, Argentina. What was the nature of your work? I polished the chrome.
Ladies and gentlemen, you will be asked to produce identification documents. Please be calm and try to cooperate. There is no cause for alarm. Probably looking for Corona Sanctuaries. Your documents, please. Oh. There you are. Thank you. So, you are all French citizens? That's right. And uh, you are all friends? We are invited guests of the Argentina Republic. We are here to celebrate your independence. Uh, do you have your official invitation with you? Of course. May I see it, please? And uh, your invitations? Oh, mine is at the hotel. Mine as well. Are these the same men you saw at the cafe? No. I've never seen them before. My apologies for any inconvenience. We have taken extreme security measures in view for the dignitaries who have come for our celebration. Oh, that's perfectly understandable. Uh, by the way, uh, could you say something to me in French? Bon, nous sommes très contents et très heureux d'être ici pour la célébration de le 150e anniversaire de votre indépendance. Did you understand? No. But uh, I like to hear French spoken. It's such a sweet language. Buenas tardes. Gente, this is my friend, Mr. Zicroni. Hello, how are you? He's interested in a little um, relaxation. You know what I mean? After a long flight, everybody understands relaxation. <laughs> Take your friend to the Café Maria Cristina. Or la calle Pregón. I promise you will have a very relaxing evening. Muchas gracias. Sign the letter. I believe so. His ego may force him. And then, of course, he thinks he may save his life this way. Mm. Is he ready? Yes, I'll get him. I don't think I can go in there. I don't think I can look at him. I can handle the camera. Remember what you told me in Jaffa, a privilege you felt to be a part of this operation. Yes, I know, but, but I never realized I would be in the same room with, with him. It's only the face of a middle-aged man. Come on.
Where are you taking me? What are you doing with me? Just follow me. Come. Watch it here. Oh, there's a chair there. Sit down. Now, I'm going to remove your glasses, but I don't want you to see the people around. Clear? So you will look down at the floor until I tell you to look up. Then you'll stare straight ahead. Understood? Yeah. No, no, take that off. It's a passport picture. Take it off. Off. We've been here now for eight days. When do we get out of here? There are complications. We still have to set up Eichmann's double. Look up. Turn your eyes slightly to your left. Yes. Hold it there. At first, the Jews were packed into vans. Hmm? And the carbon monoxide exhaust was funneled into the van. And the van would drive them down the road for 45 minutes until the screaming stopped. Do you mean that the gas chambers were an improvement? According to the chemist at Farben, death occurred within three minutes. Relax. I've given him a sleeping pill. 1944. Did Himmler... Come on, play. When I'm ready, I'll move. Yes, merely mentioned it to me. But you, nevertheless, transported hundreds of thousands of Hungarians You're smoking too much. to Auschwitz and ordered her to have them get. Just go back to your game. Because Himmler's order was verbal. I could act only on written orders. Did you ever... All right, here's your move. something for me? Did you go out and keep an eye on Michael? Because he's running those tapes again and again and again, and I don't know why. I mean, I think I know why, but... I think he's going to do something... something stupid. Would you go do that, please? Yeah.
have orders. So did he. Our orders are to bring him back for trial. He'll never stand trial. We'll never get him to his realm. We can't get out of here. We'll be caught, and then he'll be released. He'll disappear in no time, and we'll never be able to get him again. Is that what you want? I don't. I want to be as close as possible to his throat at the moment when we are caught. Michael. You don't understand. We've been here for nine days. They're closing in on us. Too many cars stop around this house. Too many cars, I'm telling you. They're closing in on us. Michael, Michael, Michael. You are not thinking clearly. Listen to me. To you? But do you know? You, you were growing oranges when we were going up chimneys. Don't you give me that. I was never one of those pampered boys from the orange groves, and you know it. The day I was born, the first sounds I heard, were the sounds of shooting. At the age of 14, I was already a messenger for the Haganah. At 17, I was with the Palmach, fighting our way to Jerusalem to break the siege. Down to the Negev, up to the Galilee. And since 1950, I've been with you. I haven't known a day's peace in my life. So don't you ever, ever throw oranges at me. Don't blame yourself, Michael. Well, I actually could have killed him. Orders or no orders, I could have killed him. You're not alone. Yesterday I bought arsenic. I put the arsenic in his rice. I took it to him. At the last moment, when the rice was on the spoon, I threw it away. Now I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't kill him. Why? Because... No matter what I've been told, I can't stop the voice. Inside my head, the voice that keeps telling me no one cares. Trial will mean nothing. I can't kill Jews. Jews are meant to be killed. They're expendable. Now and forever. I believe it. If you'd taken six million cats and dogs and put them in the killing centers to be gassed, there would have been an outcry. A great outcry. The Americans and the British would have bombed the killing centers out of existence, but he just killed Jews. No one cared then and no one cares now. No. You're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. No. People do care. Left. 
my 10 years of flying international routes, I have never been subjected to such abuse. The chief of air traffic control at Recife Airport absolutely refused to permit us to take off. Well, what did he want? I don't know. He made repeated inspections of the documents of everyone on board. So, we can't risk stopping there on the return flight. So you are suggesting that we bypass Recife and fly directly from Buenos Aires to... range of the plane. Well, I've made some preliminary calculations. The maximum fuel, minimum takeoff load, say 10,000 kilos. We can extend the range to make the 4,347 miles non-stop. But, of course, a lot depends on following tailwinds. What happens if you lose an engine? We run into a tropical storm front. We'll find a way. Captain, I would like to advance our takeoff time. Why? Just in case we have been observed or someone is aware of our activities, uh, the change of time would tend to throw them off. Yes, if it's imperative. Yes. Done. We take off at noon. Tell me, did your friends in Crony go to the cafe Maria Cristina? Ah, disaster. What? Had too much cognac. <laughs> Crashed his car. Was he hurt? Nothing serious. Uh, he's already been released from hospital. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. How did it go? <laughs> My Israeli passport. Uh -huh. How do you feel? She's a perfect surgeon. I never felt anything. Your new passport. Thank you. Ah, look at it later. Okay. You leave tomorrow, 11 a.m. First class, Air France, flight 202 to Paris. Please report. Yeah. Hospital admission treatment release. Uh -huh. What are you doing to me? Just going to give you a little injection. Something to make you slightly sleepy. Tailwinds can we expect? An Air France plane bound for receive reports 120 mile tailwind at 28,000 feet. Well, I hope we haven't inconvenienced you by our early departure. Not at all. Happy landings. Thank you.
salida de su vuelo número 840 de París en la puerta de entrada número 6. Air France anuncia la venida de su vuelo número 840 de París en la puerta de entrada número 6. I think we shall meet again. I think sometime in the middle of next year, perhaps, we shall have a scheduled flight. Uh, once a week to start with, but we'll work it out, you know. Good. Buenos días, Israel. Tell me, how is your playboy mechanic? Ah, he'll live. But not for long. Not if he keeps drinking cognac all the time, eh? Pass it, pass it. Parking brakes. Set. Emergency alternative control valve. Normal left. anymore, just smugglers. Israeli Alpha X ray 22, taxi runway 11, when is 090, contact tower 119.1 for takeoff. Israeli Alpha X-ray 22 requesting takeoff clearance. Israeli Alpha X-ray 22, hold position. Repeat, hold position. They have smuggled an Argentine citizen aboard that plane. I order you to instruct the plane to return to its berth. You must wait for Rodriguez. I have no authority to issue that order. Ground control. Israeli Alpha X-ray 22 requesting takeoff clearance. Israeli Alpha X-ray 22, please hold your position. Dispatch a police vehicle to the plane and inspect its passengers. What's the problem? We've been told to hold. I mean, when the rich says mixture of fuel on the ground, Megat says you have to make a decision. Saber qué es lo que pasa con ese avión. Hablé con Guterres. 
Contreras, ¿qué es lo que pasa? Hay un argentino secuestrado en ese avión. This uh, Inspector Contreras claims there's an Argentinian citizen on your plane. That's absurd. Here's our manifest. The manifest is in order. A man was taken to that plane. A man whose head was bandaged. Is there such a man on board? Yes, he's one of our mechanics. Well, everyone saw the man. His name is Zikroni. He was in a car crash. He uh, was injured and went to the hospital. I got the reports. May I see them? Yes, of course. We're still holding. What the hell is happening? We've been told to hold. 17 minutes. 2,000 liters of fuel will never make Dakar. Five minutes and we go. You say if we do that, we won't be able to land anywhere. Every Interpol office in the entire world will be alerted to us. Five minutes. Well, here's the highway police report. Hospital admission. Diagnosis. And hospital release. I tell you there's an Argentine citizen aboard that plane. I am lodging an official protest. What's that? Official? What's official? Where are your orders? I require no orders. 20 seconds. Here we go. Sir. Israeli Alpha X-ray 22 clear for takeoff. These uh, Jews have tricked you. Senor Rodriguez. If there were an error in the manifest, would it go badly for you? Not if the documentation was in order. Why do you ask? I'm just curious. Mr. Lazar, if a man is fooled in a noble cause, how can things go badly for him? What do you mean by fooled? This afternoon, a young man who called himself Nicholas Eichmann came to my office. There's an eight o'clock plane to Santiago. I think you ought to book space. I already have. How will the people you left behind get home? They'll find a way. Shalom.